Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, to Biking Roots, to Texas. And today we're going to discuss a uh, new Norco that uh, should have been released today when this video goes live. And we're pretty excited about it, so let's go talk about it. So the bike we're talking about today, it's a higher price bike, so not going to be the first bike for a lot of people. This is a bike for someone who you've been doing it for a little while, and maybe you want to try out something new. And this bike is going to have some new stuff compared to the old model. So let's go find the box and then get it built up and let's talk about the specs. All right, so we got uh, two sizes in and this bike has not been released yet. So we have to build it up in secret so nobody sees and that the paparazzi won't come and uh, take pictures of it before its official launch date. But we have the Site A2 version. And so we're gonna get this built up and then we're gonna talk about it. All right, so we gotta move this pile of a bike out of the way so Jared can build up the uh, hey quit playing games over there and get back to work to play Minecraft <laughs> playing Minecraft <laughs> no you know better than that so rider first mountain bikes designed and tested in the backwoods of British Columbia I've never been but it looks awesome and someday I want to go all right so it's the next day the bike is built and we're gonna talk about it today this new Norco site I will say, for one, which is pretty cool, Norco is celebrating their 60th anniversary this year. 60 years, that's quite a while to be, I don't care what business you're in, 60 years to still be in business is a pretty good sign. So they're obviously doing something right up there in Canada. So congratulations to them on that. So to celebrate, they have some cool new bikes coming out. And uh, this is the first one we're gonna talk about and others will soon follow. As far as the site goes, this bike is designed to be uh, bigger travel, so they consider it an all-mountain. Some would say maybe a Duro bike. Uh, this is 160 millimeters up front of travel, 150 in the back. We'll talk about that. Uh, for 2024, you have lots of different options to choose from if you're interested in the Norco site. They're going to still continue selling the older Gen 4. So you can find that on their site, all the different trims, uh, carbon, aluminum, with different build options. For 2024 Gen 5, you have also a good amount of options. You have, uh, just like other Norco products, the lower the number, the higher the build. And for the site, you're gonna have two different options. You're gonna have the carbon and the aluminum build. So if you want the carbon, you can get the C1, the C2 build, or also the C3. And then in the aluminum, you have the A1 or the A2, which is the one we're gonna talk about in a second. Uh, they also have a frame option if you wanna just build up. Uh, I just saw the alloy frame. I don't know if they'll have a carbon only frame. I didn't see it in the kind of preview book, but um, possibly we'll see if that gets announced if they're doing a carbon frame. I assume they would, but uh, for now, what I see is two alloys. Oh, also I will mention, uh, as far as wheel sizes, you have dual 29 options and also mixed wheels. So 29, 27.5. MX, mullet, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so depending on what you want, you have those options. Also for sizing, new for 2024, is instead of the normal small, medium, large, XL, double X, they are going to a different size chart to try to accommodate a little bit bigger range of riders. So now it's gonna be called S's, so S1 through S5. And depending how tall you are, you can go on their website and see where you kind of fall in and then decide whether if you're in the middle, you know, you want to size up or size down. All right, so let's talk about it. The 2024 uh, Norco site. This is the A2 version and this one comes in two colors. This is the, they call it a rainbow metallic, which I don't know about the rainbow. There is some glitter in there. So it has a nice high gloss paint, which looks uh, really nice. I bet in the sun it will definitely sparkle and you have a nice kind of chrome Norco branding there. Norco logo up there on the head tube. Not a whole lot of other markings on the bike, from what I can tell. Uh, if you don't like the black, you can also get the orange yellow, which if you want some pop, that color should look pretty cool too. So the big thing we're gonna talk about is this high pivot design. We'll get there in a second, but first let's talk about this frame. As I mentioned on the frame for sizing, you have five different frame options depending on your height and your desires on reach. So this being the S2 version, this one says around up to 5'8". I'm right up 5'8", so I'm kind of in between. Uh, reach numbers, it says this one is 447. So a little bit shorter than what I'm used to on the reach, but 
it could be fine. I have a longer torso, shorter legs. That seat tube is really low, so I sat on it a little bit ago, and you can definitely get low if you want to get the seat out of the way, uh, which is nice, and if you want to just stand over the bike. So head tube angle, nice and slack, 64 degrees, and the seat tube is 77.25, so should be a, still a good pedaler, but also very stable and confident going downhill with that aggressive geometry. All right, so let's talk about this frame and its design, which is the big new change for 2024 with this Gen 5 version. And it comes down to here. So now you have a high pivot design, horse link high pivot, uh, not horse, horsed with a T is what uh, they call it. So it's a patent, but a lot of other brands use horse to link suspension. Norco now uses it with their high pivot design. On this channel, we've talked about other high pivot bikes that we sell, like the Forbidden Druid and the Dreadnought, which actually I think we do have a Dreadnought in here waiting on a shock. So there's Forbidden's Dreadnought version of the high pivot. So Norco's version of the high pivot. So you may be wondering why do you need high pivot? It looks like it's more complicated, more parts. Well, the advantage is the way that the suspension goes through the travel. So on a normal bike, usually comes up, gets shorter, not quite as stable. With this design, it's more linear, so that means it's more horizontal as it moves through the uh, suspension travel. The consequence of that is sometimes you get pedal kickback, which is why they put this idler pulley here to stop that kickback. So you get the advantages of smoother, more stable uh, bike when it's going through the suspension without the drawbacks. So it's still a pedaler. And with Norco, actually this isn't their first high pivot. So they had it on the range and also on the shore, their bigger uh, kind of bike park bikes. So now they're bringing it down to their all mountain, uh, which is cool to see. So yeah, so there's the, your big change for the Gen 5. You get that high pivot design on a shorter travel uh, all mountain bike. So your idler pulley is tucked away in here and then you have a bash guard up under here to help protect for you uh, gnarly riders. As far as protection goes on your frame, you have your nice chain stay protector here and your nice seat stay protector. Since the chain is up higher, they need to protect this uh, upper stay. So you have a nice guard there. So with that horse link suspension, you have nice, simple, easy to maintain pivots. Uh, when you do have to clean them, which is nice. A little bit different look here than the previous gen as far as the uh, the shock mount, which is cool. You have some nice down tube protector and another protector here when you're uh, shuttling the bike or throwing it on the truck. All right, let's talk suspension. Uh, on this A2 alloy trim, you still get some nice uh, suspension bits, which is good. The uh, up front, you have a 160 millimeter Fox 36 rhythm. So on the 36, you have your grip damper, which is nice and smooth to be able to compress it, make it stiffer. Rebound adjustment under here, any other Fox 36 product. For those of you that don't know, this is not the Performance Elite or the factory. So you don't have the grip two damper, which gives you more adjustments for your compression and your rebound. And this one's a little bit heavier than those higher end ones, but to get at this price point, Still an awesome fork. I have basically the Marzocchi version on my bike and uh, it's a nice fork, no complaints. And for your suspension in the back, you have your Fox Float X with the piggyback reservoir. As far as controls on the Float X, you have your rebound, fast or slow. And then on the other side, you have your climb switch. So on the Float X performance, not a ton of controls, but good enough for most people. All right, let's talk about the drivetrain, starting with the cranks. Uh, you have Shimano SLX 170 32 tooth chain ring, and that's mated to a SLX rear derailleur with an SLX uh, cassette. So this hub has micro spline on it. So you're at a 10 51 tooth range like other Shimano products and a uh, Dior M6100 chain. And I forgot to mention, you do have UDH hangers, so SRAM fans and on some of their other carbon builds, they're going to have transmission. So if you ever did want to change, you got it with UDH. And for your shifter, normal Shimano SLX. All right, for your dropper posts, you get a Trans-X. Uh, for this size, it says it's a 170. For the 3 and the 4, they get big 200s, and then I think even bigger on the 5. So the advantage of having a nice low and steep 
seat angle is you can get a very long dropper, which for some people is nice to be able to get it up to where you need it, but get it out of the way when you don't. And for your saddle, you get an SDG Bel Air. Looks decently comfortable. For your dropper post lever, uh, Norco branded, feels fine, nothing fancy. And for your cockpit, you have Norco branded 25 degree rise, 800 millimeter bars with a Norco branded stem, 45 millimeter, 35 millimeter clamp. And then you get some SDG branded uh, lock on grips. So a pretty standard uh, cockpit setup. For your brakes, you get the Shimano MT501s with the uh, small, easy to use one finger lever. 501 or 520 uh, pistons, uh, these are four piston front brake mated to a 203 millimeter center lock rotor. And in the back you have 180 millimeter center lock, uh, 180 millimeter post, which is nice, so you don't have to use any adapters. So should be plenty of stopping power for most people. All right, let's finish it up with wheels and tires. We'll start with tires this time. So up front, 29 by 2.5 Maxxis Asagai 3C Max Terra EXO Plus. So plenty of grip. Houston people, probably not, but everywhere else, uh, it's a good grippy tire. In the back, 27.5, because this is the MX version, 2.5. This one, you get uh, max grip and double down. So yeah. Uh, these are chunky heavy tires. So yeah, speaking of weight, we did weigh the bike and it came in around 37 pounds So it's yeah with pedals. So it's not a lightweight bike, but going down the mountain I'm sure it's very stable and fun and weights not as big of an issue because you get nice Beefy tires that hopefully aren't going to let you down and give you lots of grip So speaking of the wheels, we have 148 millimeter boost in the back uh, Shimano SLX hub which gives you not super noisy, but decent engagement and noise for those that want the noise. And you have WTB rims in the back. WTB in the front, SLX hub in the front. I was waiting for you to ride it. So Jared finally showed up, so we're going to go ride it. All right, he's on time. Jared's a mullet fan. You kind of have, you could do a pretty sweet mullet. Should I, should I get a mullet? Yeah, just you need to grow out the back a little bit more. Okay. Should and I trim the uh, top to match the back too? Yes, okay. I think you should. All right, so we're going to go pedal it around the parking lots um, and see how it feels. I wish I could take it on the trails, but uh, this one's for sale, so we're not going to dirty it up, right? Unless Jared buys it, but I don't think he is. So, yeah, let's see how it rides. Ooh, it is sunny today, beautiful 70 degrees in Houston. Do you need sunglasses, dude? I'm going to be able to see. We didn't set up the sag, but eh, just see how it feels. Yeah, small and playful. It's fine. Cool. Now let's You're go good. get it dirty. All right, so just took out the site in the parking lot and uh, messed around a little bit with it with Jared. And a lot of fun. Size feels a little bit small for me. Like I said, I'm right in the cusp between S2 and S3 being five foot eight. Jared's five foot nine. He also said it felt small. So if it's around town, you want something that's quick and nimble, this size could be fine for you if you're at that similar height. If you're racing it, probably go up to the bigger size just to get something a little bit longer in wheelbase, a little bit more stable. But overall, we are liking the site, the new one. It feels like it, I haven't ridden, I'll say I haven't ridden the, the new Druid yet. Uh, I want to, but um, the old, I feel like it pedals a lot better and smoother than my old Druid as far as the high pivot design and their design versus Forbidden's. But nothing against Forbidden, but yeah, this design feels a lot less high pivoty, less resistance. All right, less resistance is better than high, high pivoty. <laughs> um, so anyway, if uh, let me know what you guys think on this new site. Uh, if it's gonna be on your short list for your next all mountain kind of enduro bike, uh, let us know in the comments. All right, so that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see more content like this from Biking Roots, like us, subscribe to us, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Hope you're doing well, take care, bye.